Hi, my name is Devin Knight. I'm the training director here at Pragmatic Works. And today I wanted to talk to you about something special that was released a few months ago by the group at Gartner. And they're a research group. If you're not really familiar with them, they do quite a bit of things. You can certainly check out their website. But one of the things that they do is they actually analyze different BI and analytic platforms. And back in February, they released a special new Magic Quadrant. And basically, if you've never seen one of these before, I'll put it on the screen here now. But the idea of a Magic Quadrant here is to analyze the different BI platforms and give you an idea of how these different competitors stack up against each other. So they measure a multitude of different things. And what I did and I want to do in this video is to actually go through a little bit of information that they had in their report so you have a good idea of how Microsoft stacks up against the other competitors in its market. Now you can certainly see from the Magic Quadrant that they are one of the leaders and when it comes to BI and analytics tools, primarily pushed by the tool called known as Power BI, which many of you probably are already familiar with. But I thought it would be interesting to dive in deeper and see why Power BI and Microsoft were the leader in these areas, and what are some of the things that Gartner is looking at now, and what are some of the things that they're going to be looking at in the future. So first, I want to talk a little bit about what they were looking for now. What is Gartner looking at now in BI tools? What is it some of the things that really impress them about the Microsoft applications, for example? And uh, how can we understand that? And why is it a good decision to actually use some of the Microsoft tools? So the, one of the main reasons that you actually look at, if you look at the research paper, is that the price was highly impactful when it came to Power BI. The, the price that people paid to be able to implement solutions, the price that people paid to be able to get into the market on a BI solution was a big factor. And the fact that Power BI is priced so low compared to many of its competitors was one of the deciding factors. In fact, it was cited as 12%, one of the deciding factors for 12% of folks when it came to why they chose a Power BI and analytics tool. They the 12% of the group asked chose Power BI for the reason of pricing. There's also a few other reasons here as well. So ease of use and visual appeal is another big one. Actually, 14% of customers noted that Power BI and the reason why they chose Power BI and bought Power BI was because of the ease of use. And if you look at the tool and if you've played around with the tool, you'll realize that fairly quickly it makes sense, right? Power BI is a pretty easy tool to get used to using. Once you open it up, it's designed to make people that are familiar with Excel, the most popular application in the world, feel very comfortable. Things even like the programming language built into it called DAX is very similar to Excel formulas. The way that you can do editing and transforming of your data is very simple through the query editor. The Power Query Editor is made very simple for folks that are new and don't know what they're doing to be able to move around. It has things like Q&A, question and answer, to be able to very easily create reports without much thought. It also has things like that natural query language that's behind Q&A to be able to power and, and feed in to those visuals that are created. And that natural query language was actually brought up quite a few times with inside of the Gartner report as a benefit of why you should choose Power BI. One of the other reasons was really the product vision. And one of the things that you're seeing with Microsoft and Power BI specifically is their vision for the Power BI product is something that's really far above all the other tools. You'll see obviously that the updates that come with Power BI are done on a monthly, if not sometimes weekly basis when you're looking at the Power BI service. And because of that, that, that vision that they have to constantly be innovating, they got high marks on innovation. You see that again, if you look at the Magic Quadrant here once more, you'll see as far as their innovation and their, their ability to execute on that innovation, they get really high marks on it. This includes things that they haven't even really fully released yet, like the capabilities to actually have VR goggles and be able to view Power BI visuals from inside of a virtual reality environment. That's, that actually is around HoloLens, using those HoloLens that is available through Microsoft, you can actually uh, connect in and connect and view Power BI reports through those. So there's some really cool capabilities that are obviously coming in the future. Uh, that's one of them. You've actually seen that at a few conferences where they've shown how that can be done. Also, the customer experience is a big factor here as well. So the availability of Power BI, the fact that they have both cloud and non-cloud capabilities with Power BI is a huge benefit. So there's not really a, any customer that can say, I can't use Power BI because it's in the cloud, or they can't use Power BI because it's not in the cloud because Power BI is available in either place. They can certainly get to Power BI uh, no matter which way they want or need to get to it. It's easy to get to, it's easy to access, and it's easy to set up in your environment as well. Now, there were also a few top reasons why customers chose Power BI as their Power BI analytics platform. Things like the high value we talked about, the comprehensive analytics solution that it is, it's centralized management that it has kind of this one click or just a few clicks to manage 
the global scale that's provided through the Azure platform, as well as the security governance and compliance that are available within inside of Power BI. If you haven't already, I re definitely recommend that you look at the Microsoft Trust Center to see what kind of compliances and regulations that Power BI meets. A lot of people have thought in the past that Power BI didn't meet the regulations of their industry, when in reality that wasn't true. You can actually go look and see at the Microsoft Trust Center, do a quick search for that, and you can find out exactly what Power BI is meeting and how they're, they're performing as far as those regulations that are uh, in different industries. Now, the other thing that was looked at was a future, like 2020 look. So 2020, what are some of the things that we need to look at as far as the future of BI and analytics solutions? And that's something that the Gartner study did as well. The Gartner study looked at things like that. So one of the things that it looked at were things like the number of data scientists that were going to be around in the future is going to be far surmount, surmounted by the citizen data scientist. So the idea of the data scientist being really more of a regular type job rather than having to be an expert in analytics and Python and R and all those things, the idea of the citizen data scientist as really something that's prevalent. And, and so what Gartner's looking at is which tools are really lining up properly for that citizen data, data scientist that's going to be doing a lot of data exploration to be able to really enhance what they want to do and do searches and find the data they need and analyze the data they need as well. So that's one of the elements that they were looking for is that's going to be an increased number of citizen data scientists over professional data scientists. And because of that, which tools allow that uh, properly? The other thing that they were looking at in the year 2020 are things like the natural language, the natural query language that Power BI has, for example. Some other tools they think are obviously going to need to be looking at that as well, and artificial intelligence and how you can actually leverage those things with inside of your BI platform. So those are going to be key things that other products, as well as Power BI, should be looking at in the future. And Power BI is already doing that through its natural query language and also things like Quick Insights that do a lot of automated analytics for you. Those are really key features that if your tool is not doing it now, needs to be looking at how to do it. You should be asking your vendor, are you looking at these things? And in Microsoft's case, Power BI is doing those now. Another element of this is augmented analytics. And this, again, kind of goes along with the lines of things like uh, the natural query language and quick insights. Those features are oftentimes included with this thing called augmented analytics, where your, your, your BI tools, really your future purchases of BI tools, need to be looking at this concept of automated anal or augmented, excuse me, augmented analytics, where there's a lot of things like data discovery made much more simple, much easier to do, and also in a lot of cases assisted by AI components. So there's a lot of factors that are really important when it came to this Gartner study. I thought it was worth a quick review to let you know Power BI and Microsoft are very aligned with what the industry standards are now, as well as what they are going to be in the future. And that's why I got such high marks when it came to the Magic Quadrant for BI and analytic platforms. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick review of the Gartner study. If you have any questions, you can feel free to email me at training at pragmaticworks.com with any questions. Thanks a lot.